Um, so I, I want to start what I think with the most important question. Uh, Kara, uh, it's for you. Um, I'm, Kamina has such a unique look that I am curious if you've ever wanted or if you ever did leave set with full makeup, the tattoos and everything, go to Starbucks or a store and be <laughs> like, oh, I get treated a lot different in makeup. <laughs> Do you know what? I've never done it. I've never wandered around town as drummer. I missed my chance. Do you know what? I <laughs> I feel like I'm just so eager to take it off, to be honest. It's so um, it's so drummer, it's so intense. And to part of you know, getting uh, leaving the day behind the ritual of taking that makeup off is uh, mm. you know, uh, it's an important part of leaving it all behind, mm. to be honest. No, completely. I have some friends who uh, act who've explained that to me as well. I just yeah. still, you know, it's it. I would imagine you'd be treated a lot different with that. In, you with know neck, what I mean? Neck tattoo, big neck yeah. tattoo, for sure, for sure. She definitely, so, she definitely wields those glares when she needs it. For the record. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do the glares like even without the makeup or the. Yeah, for yeah, sure. She's, ha- she's chastised me several times already <laughs> today. I I heard from the casting director. That's how she got the role. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously I'm very thankful to Amazon for saving the series um, and keeping it on the air and giving it this great last season. Um, and I am curious for the both of you, do you feel like when you need to buy something nowadays, you sort of have to buy it on Amazon? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that feels like, it feels like um, like taking a bite out of my paycheck. <laughs> if anything, I'm like, oh, I gotta get this somewhere else. I, otherwise it's like, what have I done? I've worked for nothing. <laughs> Uh, being serious now. Um, the thing about The Expanse is, like me, uh, the fans of the series are very passionate, very engaged, very much following things. What do you think it is about the, the series and, and the story that has, you know, captivated so many people? Oh, do you know what I think is one of the, the greatest things about this show is that it doesn't... Um, it doesn't dumb itself down in any way, shape, or form. Mm. It's not a show you can have on in the background. I think that it 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 assumes the very best of its audience, and I think people respond to that. You know, we don't have to over-explain things or like, you know, explain this with a flashback. Like, I think it. it I think Noreen, especially, um, as well as of course all of the writers, but I think we do a really good job of um, respecting our audience's intelligence. Mm-hmm. And not. And as a part of that, not giving any clear cut black and white answers. Yeah, yeah. I think that, and it's even true about Marco. I mean, n- nothing is is good or evil. There's a full spectrum and everyone is making choices along that spectrum and may make choices along different parts of that spectrum. And I, I wish we could see more of that on, on television, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about Marco is that he makes excellent points. The things that he's fighting for, you absolutely side with him. I think he maybe just goes a slight bit too far um, with, uh, you know, what he's trying to, uh, what he does. So what is it like, what's your take on Marco in terms of, you know, I I guess, you know what I mean? How do you feel about him playing him? I I feel like seeing what he's seen and having experienced what he's experienced, I can't imagine if he had the bandwidth and if he had the capacity and the drive to do whatever it took to make it different, I don't see why he wouldn't. I, I, I mean, if somebody didn't have the bandwidth, if somebody didn't have the, the capacity, if somebody didn't have the intelligence, if somebody didn't have the drive to do it, I understand fully. You just resign yourself to your life and, and perhaps you, you give up a little bit or you shrink in order to make it feel okay. But there is nothing about him that's shrunken. There is, there is nothing about him that is willing to play small. Quite to the contrary, he insists on being larger than life and sees him larger than life. And I think there's something really noble about that. He, he, there is huge sacrifice that he's willing to make in order to to make that a reality and being a young single father was a huge part of that like he, he like the, the the experience of having a life depend on you and to the experience of 
knowing what you went through and from the bottom of your heart, never wanting your son to have that same experience mm -hmm. is a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to say, hey, I don't know how many more years I have in this life, but if I don't make this situation better for my children, I don't know what my life is worth. And that's the degree of his um, uh, uh, feeling, his urgency, mm -hmm. is that it has to happen for my kid or my kid is going to suffer in the same way that I did. And I understand that. I can empathize with that. I, I can empathize with any human being who is suffering and does not want their child to suffer the same and is willing to make an uproar in some way to, to make that happen, even if it means that they have to do things that may feel abhorrent, you know, like I, I understand that mm -hmm. desperation. I'm not condoning it, but I understand it. And mm -hmm. I, and I respect that parental love that leads to that. Um, I've seen the entire fire final season and uh, it's fantastic, um, but I don't know how much you guys are allowed to say. So what are you allowed to tease to the fans of about the final season? <laughs> just like go to the very limit please <laughs> what you can say um i mean i think that i think that the fact that drummer is still alive is pretty remarkable i think things seem pretty hopeless for her um so anything really on top of that is just kind of gravy for her <laughs> i think um i think it's a really satisfying ending um, without any spoilers, I feel like it's it it answers enough questions and it leaves enough questions unanswered to be, I think, extremely, extremely satisfying for mm. the audience who's been with us for this whole ride. And I will say I agree with that. I think they've synthesized the final season and jam packed it in a in in a really masterful way. And I will also say, you can you see behind the multiple facades of Marco this season for the first time as the cracks in his psychology become apparent, and um, you may see you know you may see parts of him that you you didn't know ex existed, and that's kind of cool. Well, I'm curious for both of you. You really don't know how much you're going to be featured in a season until you get the scripts. Both of you have really juicy parts this season with a lot to do. What was it like reading those scripts for the first time and being like, oh, this is really good? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I was definitely hired um, back in season two uh, on a guest star role. So for me, I'm just like, this is nuts. Like, what am I doing on the poster now? This is just crazy that this <laughs> went this way. Um, you're so cute when you're humble. <laughs> Keon knows it's just pretend I'm actually like, yeah, I'm the queen. Like, yeah, really, she walked around uh, set calling yeah, herself the queen was, of the universe it was um less humble um <laughs> but for the cameras I shed a tear I'm so grateful um this is the problem of getting paired with a friend to do this interview because I can't get away with anything um okay go back to being sweet okay 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 okay, okay. Um, <laughs> go back to being sweet. Yeah, I mean, they're dream scripts. They're dream. It's like Christmas morning. You get yeah. a script, and it's like, holy fuck, I get to do this. It's yeah. gonna be incredible. Like, it's I get to do it with this person. I get to do this scene. I get to, you yeah. know, it's like, yeah, it blows your mind. Really, it's exciting. Especially for Marco, especially when he gets to see the speeches yeah. on the page. Yeah. There's like something, there's like, like the Marco and me just like, ooh, yes, yeah. they get, <laughs> I get to hear my voice, yeah, they speech. get to hear my voice. <laughs> it's uh, it's like feeling, feeling like the, wor the words <laughs> have an aliveness to them and can't help but just like well up in you. It's, it's so well written and so perfect for the character mm. that, that, that was definitely exciting because you don't, I don't know what those are going to look like. I don't know what his big orations will will materialize like, but they, that's exciting for sure. Oh, yeah. To see his opportunities to, to like be on display. What was it like? I am curious for each of you, the last day of filming. And did you notice in the days leading up to that last day that you were possibly borrowing a few extra things here and there from set and taking them home? I didn't take anything home. That's just like, I 
just drummer is so like I just want to leave her be her life is so different from mine and I don't I just I'm not I don't yeah I didn't take anything um but definitely I actually shot the very very last scene of the last day um that was me and my my crew uh Sam or Salem and Vanessa Smythe who I love so dearly um and uh I mean, it was kind of surreal, to be honest, like everybody, they had the big, a big screen set up. So all of our producer friends and writer friends could zoom in and we're like, Hey, woo, we're, we did it. Um, but yeah, it was really weird. It's, it's like really nice to all be together to do press yeah. now. Cause I feel like we didn't have that chance at the time, you know, to, it, it was like pre-vaccine depths of the pandemic. So we were all pretty isolated then. For you? Yeah. Ah, yeah, it was it was a trip. We, a bunch of you guys, for my last day, showed up. I think I had a speech. It. You think? You think? Keon did a speech. I mean, Marco did a speech, and then Keon did yeah, a speech. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of speechifying, but it was sweet. I mean, having having them around for the last day it was definitely. It's been a strange experience, sort of like disentangling from that guy. That that's that's definitely a trip. Um, oh, have you been but, trying I, to disentangle? <laughs> but I did take uh, this is probably not supporting my disentangling process, but I did take <laughs> his amazing belt buckle that I that I jammed with our wardrobe designer, Joanne Hansen, to design with specific geometry and and a lot of beautiful specifics on there. So they gifted that to me. So I'm pretty happy to still have that. And I sleep with it for sure when I'm. <laughs> yeah when I'm having Marco dreams. Yeah, I mean, that's intense. Yeah, pretty juicy. Uh, for both of you, um, I would imagine getting to portray these characters is gonna be something to, that you take with you the rest of your life. Um, what do you think you're gonna miss most about actually inhabiting these roles? It's such a rare treat as an artist to be given a script that um, sometimes you get it and it's like, holy fuck, how am I gonna do this? Like the script challenges us to rise to the occasion you know sometimes you have, I don't know especially like our main job is auditioning and you get auditions and you're like this is such garbage <laughs> and you have to like try to find ways to like make it believable almost you know what I mean uh which is the exact opposite of this experience where you're like oh my god I have to inhabit this and so to be challenged in that way um it's, it's incredible it's an incredible experience so that's what I'll miss the most about playing drummer for sure mm. and there's a word that marco uses that really like he is still rippling within me which is you must be audacious mm. and i think there's something really like if i knew that i only had a certain number of days or months to live i think immediately my audacity would increase I think I would take risks and put myself out there in a lot of ways. And I think that's, I, I, I honor and I value his, his audacity. Like for better or for worse, he's putting himself out there and he's making those big choices and he's literally lunging himself pelvis first towards his vision. Um, I would imagine that this show, um, actually I'm gonna switch my life. There's a different question. I think there's a lot of people behind the scenes that don't get recognized for their contributions to the expanse and everything, you know, that to make this series. So maybe for each of you, who's like an unsung hero that you want to give like a shout out to and like just thank them for their work? Oh my God. Well, Verity, who does my makeup, yeah. Verity and, Fiction. And, and my she makeup. Did makeup too. Yeah. That's true. She's rad. She's just like such a boss. Um, like keep an eye out for her. I feel like she's gonna become a producer extraordinaire and like take over the world. She's um, yeah. she's she's worked on several several incredible projects and she's yeah just a real bombshell of a human. Super mm -hmm. smart, super funny, super talented. Amy in production office. Amy in production. Amy Amy was holding this ship together yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. She's amazing. She's amazing. Um, Behind the scenes, Lou and Webb. I, oh, yeah. Lewin was yeah. there with us every day, always had our back. Yeah. yeah. One of the producers. I would say Jason Vieira, our, yes. um, our Steadicam operator, yeah. is like 
just a dream of a human being, super talented. He's like responsible for so much of that zero G feeling and like really be like, like almost straddled the line between being cast and crew because there's, he wow. danced with us, right? Totally. Like it was like choreography we were doing with him. Oh yeah. And we had like a language together. Yeah. With the support of the amazing cinematographer, Jeremy Bain. Yeah. I mean, Jeremy, but, yeah, he's amazing. Who is amazing. But there's one, there's a scene. I can't wait for everyone to see it. But in, in episode six, where Jason did something that I've never seen done before. I saw him move in a, like a gymnastic way that I've never seen. And he found some magic with me. It was, he was literally my dance partner in this long scene in mm. episode six, that is just magic. Like there's so many people to answer your question. There's so many people who have invested yeah. like heart, soul into this to make this magic. And, yeah. it, and it is truly, it may, be, may not be the case in every instance, but this is truly like a group undertaking this is truly like mm -hmm. a, 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 a communal effort that required investment above and beyond what's required of you at the level of your job it's it's like pouring your soul into creating yeah. this this creative enterprise and this is one of those rare ones where that magic comes from everyone's investment every department every yeah. i mean i mean yeah it's to say nothing we had, we can't list everyone them. yeah like yeah. we're like doing the credits basically like the whole props team like the vfx yeah. team yeah. like sets lighting yeah no I, I think i think that a lot of people they see what's in on the screen but i i don't think a lot of people realize the amount of people behind the scenes like it's one thing to look at the credits but unless you've yeah. stood there on set to see what it really takes I just think a lot of people don't realize how how many people are bringing this to life. How yeah. many people it took to help us just get our suits on. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. not a joke. Yeah. Like mul multiple people helping you. it's it's I'm telling you it's a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I basically have to stop but I'm just going to uh, yeah, I think I can sneak in one more. Uh, I was just curious if you could talk about if you could keep one of the sets that you've worked on or been on, which one would you want to keep in like your backyard? The Pella. The Pella is the most amazing spaceship I've ever seen. It's better than all the other ones and it has two floors and it's beautiful. The Office of the Behemoth with the Brokeback Cowboys in the uh, background. <laughs> I like both of those answers. Listen, thank you so much thank for your you. work. Yeah. Have a great day.